Yes, we did. Pretty exciting because uh, that's my favorite comic book character. So to see his costume and just its full form is pretty cool. So. Yeah. Well, he should come <laughs> hang out with us in Phoenix because I hear he hangs out there quite a bit with comic care. That's what he was saying. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, he goes and he helps school children in hospitals and brings comic books and cheers them up. That's really amazing to find that in the heart and be able to make that character live. Yeah, absolutely. So why, why is that your favorite comic book? Well, I kind of got into comic books because of the first Iron Man movie with Robert Downey Jr., back in 2008 so that kind of got me into comic books and I just really loved the character I love that he was so flawed but yet he could overcome anything with his intelligence and just how smart he was and even though he'd been through so much he was always able to surpass it and so that's why he's always been my favorite but wow so he's like that hero to aspire to to overcome yeah absolutely we're all human, we're all imperfect, but he models that aspiration to yeah. do the best you can. Yeah, I've always seen him as like one of the most like confident characters, but yet with all that he's been through in all of the comics that you'll read and even in the movies, you know, he's been through so much, but yet, you know, he's always trying to do the right thing. And people think he's like this egotistical, you know, kind of person, but really he is always thinking about others and not so much himself, but just his ego is kind of his like defense mechanism the way that I read into it but that's how I feel. <laughs> Have the stories impacted your life personally in, in any kind of way that you can share? Yeah I mean absolutely just because I've been such a fan since 2008 since I was about 16 years old I mean I you know I'm still wearing the shirts and my whole room's decked out in memorabilia ah. so I mean it's had a huge impact in my life and through comic books and through um, you know, the movies and the MCU and everything, I've been able to meet so many cool people because of it and to build more relationships through the comic book industry. And and that's how I was able to go to so many conventions is because of comic books. And that's why I love going to so many of these things because it's like, you know, just going to a big party with all your friends because you all share really common interests. So, you know, everybody has their favorite, but then you meet somebody who's like, oh, another big Iron Man fan, huh? <laughs> it's like, I think I got you beat, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so yeah. There's so many different kinds of people here. Yeah. It's great common ground to come and share the Absolutely. Love and the characters. Yeah. Have you ever thought about making anything with comics? Do you do any artwork with them or No, I'm not so much an artist, but I I just got my bachelor's in English, so I'm more of a writer. Wow. So, wow. yeah, I definitely I, I read so much just because of my major and I really love getting pictures every once in a while with graphic novels so it's a nice break from reading just straight solid text, text yeah. solid text so that, that's why I love comic books so much but as far as doing anything with them I mean I would love to do some storyboards or you know to make my own story much like Scott Snyder did for Batman or yeah. you know Greg Capullo and stuff so well, with today, there's so many tools that are in absolutely so opportunities for DIY if it's in your heart you yeah Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I hope so. Thinking, how many women comic book creators are there? Do you know? Are there many? Um, you know, there there are quite a few, actually. Yeah, I mean, especially in, like, D.C., because we got the, the D.C. bombshells uh, that's going right now. Okay. And um, they're kind of, they're kind of like the D.C. version of, like, pinups and stuff. And so they, they be, they've become really, really popular. They've even got their own uh, pop figures. So the little Funko ones. Okay, I don't know them. The they're like a little figures. Okay, little figures. Yeah, there's like a whole bunch of booths for them, but yeah, they got like their own like pop figures for them, and so those have been really popular with DC especially. Oh, nice. Yeah, but Marvel's kind of going through a little uh, story arc right now, so there's not a whole lot for uh, development for more, uh, you know, female characters right now. So. That's really cool. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like knowledge about it. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest things happening right now that you know of that you can share? Um, as far as comics? Uh -huh. um, right now, Marvel's doing something called Secret Empire. And it's, uh, it's building off a lot of the storylines right now. So there's different series going on with different artists and you know different writers. But right now, what's going on is a story arc that is just going to affect all of them. 
and it's basically dealing with uh, Captain America being a Hydra agent. And was he a Hydra agent this whole entire time, or you know, is there something else going on? So trying to get into that right now, but I won't, I won't give any spoilers as far as what I've read, but that's what's kind of going on right now with Marvel. Oh, that's fascinating. And then DC Comics just did a whole entire reboot called Rebirth. So we just got out of the new 52 universe, and now they've rebooted all of the series into the Rebirth. And so now we're getting a whole bunch of new storylines, and they're just kind of revamping everything right now. When they uh, reboot? Uh huh. Um, it's it's not very often actually. It it takes a couple of years sometimes. Like New Fifty Two, they went, um, they did fifty two issues for each of the series, if I'm correct. I believe it's yeah. They went up to like fifty two just to be like oh New Fifty Two, and then then they went and they rebooted it into Rebirth. But it might have gone a little bit past fifty two, but I can't remember because <laughs> some of them were just so different. So. Mm-hmm. The physical copies. copies. Right. Instead of everything digital. Um, well, I think the reason that the physical copies are still so popular is that if you can get them signed by the author or the illustrator, they become worth a lot more. And so, and there's also a lot of collectors out there that like to get every single issue and, you know, they keep them in pristine condition. And, you know, if you have them for a long time and they become popular later on. That's why, you know, uh, you'll see some comic books there that are worth $300 nice. because they were back from the 70s or something and then they're in perfect condition. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's why the, the physical part of the comics are still thriving so much. But even when you do buy an issue, you get a code inside and you can actually get the issue for free to download on the, okay. the comic website. So you, so you kind of get both. Well, right. Great. I think the digital part is more just for convenience. So if you're out on the road and you don't want to bring your actual physical copies because you don't want to ruin it, then you have the digital option. So say you're out on vacation and you want to read some comics, then you know, you've got it right at your fingertips and you could read thousands and thousands of comic books right at your fingertips. So I think that's more just for convenience, but not so much for like the hardcore collectors or right. people that like to really get those issues and like see them and stuff. So tell us about your personal collection. Oh boy, <laughs> it's a lot. Oh, really? <laughs> I have boxes and boxes. It's, it's quite a bit. And I have a backlog right now. My whole desk is about this high wow. of ones that I've not read yet because I'm in the middle of a, an omnibus, which is basically a collection of all the really popular comics for a certain character or for a certain storyline. That's called an omnibus. An omnibus, oh. right? And they're about this thick. You'll probably see them all around here, but it's like it's a huge collection. They're worth about $125 if you can get your hands on one. But I'm in the middle of one, so that's why my backlog is this oh, big. Yeah. But I mostly started with um, collecting the Batman comics. Uh-huh. So I have boxes and boxes of all of the issues of like the new 52 Batman and the new 52 Batman and Robin that was uh, written by Tomasi. And um, I have a couple of them signed uh, by Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder. So, I mean, there's a few that I really got into, and then I just have a whole collection of Iron Man. Oh. So much Iron Man comics. Yeah. So, that's my huge collection. Well, Kelly, I wanted to thank you so much for taking yeah, no the time problem. out here and sharing with us. I love all your background knowledge in the Oh, thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is great. So this yep. is